What's up? It's your boy Shea Waters the One coming back at you with another epic video. It's been a while. It's been a while since I posted, but I'm coming back with another video. Uh, this is kind of a random one. I'm gonna be teaching people how to solder. Uh, so why don't we get right into the video? So the first step of soldering is get yourself a clean environment. So as you can see right now. This is not very clean, so you know what I say? You ready? You know how we're going to clean this? Just like this. All clean. It looks better in my head. Okay, stop, stop, stop being mean. Um, the second step is probably to have some sort of heat resistant material because I am using a wood desk I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna be using a rotary mat because that's pretty much all I have But at the moment I that's what I have I do plan on upgrading in the future though So until I can get something better I'm gonna be using my mom's rotary mat Hashtag not sponsored uh, So this step is probably the easiest because you don't really need much. You literally this you can get masks like these at Joann's for like what eight dollars at them. Well, maybe a little more. I didn't check. Um, second step, oh, you're obviously gonna need a soldering iron. So in my case, I have a Vast Star model. Once again, not sponsored. I have had this for a little bit of time. And this is the current one I currently have. My dad had one which I learned to use from. I've been soldering for about a year now. Uh, if you do put just soldering iron, you could, there's two things you want to look for. Do they have a sponge? Because the sponge is used for cleaning. Usually they that's expanding sponge, as in it's just like a small sponge and you add water and it expands. And then you, uh, if, it, if your soldering iron doesn't come with it, you're going to want to get a tip cleaner. And that sounds very strange, and very inappropriate, to say the least, but I can get it out right now. You're going to want a tip cleaner. In my case, I have a YH08B. So, it's a tip cleaner. It's basically just brass, brass shavings. So, that's that. Next, you're going to need some wire. So, in my case, I have this. This is just 14 AWG stranded wire. You can solder with almost any wire. Well, actually, you can solder with any wire, you just have to have the right tools and materials. Let me take this in order. So, this is, let's say you're starting off and you don't have much, you just want to get into the hobby of electricity. Or, like, let's say modeling for some reason, or, what's it called, um, RC. Which I'm not in, I just like soldering for fun because I'm a nerd. Yes, I said it, I'm a nerd. So, you're going to obviously need a soldering iron. In this case, I'm just going to cut two pieces of wire off of one. You can use any wire you'd like, just make sure you have the right temperature set. In my case, I'm going to be running about... Uh, I'd say... Three on my soldering iron, which I'll put right down here. Where... You know, what uh, temperature that is. So, I'm going to cut two pieces off. Next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to strip the wires. That sounds very strange, but that's what it's called. It's basically when you remove the rubber and sometimes silicone shrouding from the wire. You see, I just got this wire and I'm not 100% perfect with it yet, so I usually end up trimming a little bit of this in the um, actual wire off. Not the shaving or the um, insulation, and the actual wire itself, the copper. It's either copper or silver, sometimes aluminum. They basically make water out of every- oh, that was a good one. This time I didn't strip, it, uh, strip any of the wire off. Um, so then you're going to want to twist your wire. This makes basically makes for better connect connectivity of the electricity going through. And, oh, you might hear some weird noises. We got cats for Christmas, so they're all over the place. They're still kittens. But back to this, we have two wires now. Once again, I somehow didn't get anything off. So I'm going to turn my soldering iron now. I'm going to make sure it's at the right temperature. I'm going to twist my other end of the wire. Uh, well, some of it came off. Okay, let me get that in the frame. 
Oh, that's just great. Some wire just fell onto my computer. Hopefully, I can remove that. It's proving farly more difficult. Oh crap, it's falling in the terminal. Well, this isn't good. Oh, I got it. Okay, well, good now. So, next thing I'm going to talk about. There's multiple types of... or not types, but multiple ways of making sure terminals don't touch other terminals, the negative terminal, which would then lead to a short, which could cause explosions, which could cause a whole bunch of things. If you want more than that, go to Electro Boom's channel. Uh, Electro Boom's YouTube channel. I'll put a link in uh, for that in the description. So... The one way of doing this is, and the way I do it, is usually I'll either touch these two wires together to, to solder them together, uh, and then I'll either put heat shrink over, I'll wrap an electrical tape, sometimes you can use hot glue. Hot glue is probably not a good enough, um, uh, good one if you're going to be working with high voltage or high amperage, because that heats the wire up quite fast if you have too thin of wire. And it could cause the hot glue to melt, which could then get all over your circuit, and it becomes a pain in the butt. Uh, electrical tape is your second best bet. What you're going to do is you're going to take some tape off. I personally like using Super 33 because it's... No, this is Super 88. Uh, and basically, you can use whatever you want. There's certain, way, there's certain, certain ones that are better than others. I really don't see a difference in them. They all hold up to me. And then again, I haven't worked with AC voltage or current. AC is alternating, for those of you who don't know. So what you're going to do, you're going to, after you soldered it, you're going to wrap your, all of the terminal, or not, all of the copper in the, in the, um, the electrical tape. I can't speak. I don't have a brain. Um, after that, you're going to want to make, want to make sure it's completely sealed, whereas it's all connected. I'll, I'll show you that when I get to that section. And then, the best way to get this done is to use heat shrink. Now, there's multiple ways of using heat shrink. You could use a lighter to seal it, or to shrink it, quote-unquote. You can use a uh, soldering iron, which I is what I, I mean, that's what I usually use. You can use a heat gun. There's a whole bunch of ways of doing it. Uh, I usually use a soldering iron. Actually, that's all I ever use. So, um, is this hot now? Yes. Do not touch the tip of your soldering iron. That is, a, it gets extremely hot and it will burn you. Trust me, I know. I burned myself. Next thing you're going to want to know. You're going to need a solder. It's basically just like lead. You know, lead, sometimes there's non-lead. Uh, in this case, this is, um, this is 60% lead, I believe. Uh, it ha comes with flux on it, this particular one. This one came with my soldering iron. I'll put a link to that in the below. Once again, not sponsored. Uh, this is 0.6 millimeter solder, so this usually melts fairly easily. The wire will heat up very fast, and it will hurt you, especially if you're not resistant to heat. Now, the best way to do it is to make sure that, first of all, your soldering iron is hot enough to melt the solder, which in my case it is. You're going to want to tin each wire. Usually you do this by taking the solder. And you'd be putting it... Here, let me get that in frame. I'm working right over here. So, you're going to take your solder, and you're going to do this. If you have a wire stand, it's the exact same operation. The only difference is that it's above the, the ground. Or I want to say ground, above the table. For some reason, my solder doesn't want to melt. Give me one second. Now, and you're going to want to tin each wire. There's a well, two, and there's a whole bunch of ways of tinning wires. I particularly just put some on the, the actual soldering iron, or I put it on the um the wire and then I solder it on. That is a really really weird. I mean, I guess that's lead for you. Um, also, do not breathe in the fumes of the soldering of the um solder. Lead is toxic to your body. If it gets in your lungs, it can very easily give you cancer. So, once you've got one end, as you can see, I'm having to hold it on farther back because it's starting to get hot. Then you're going to put solder on the other side, assuming it doesn't go all the way around. Um, I know I haven't been particularly busy lately in upload. I'm going to try to change that. To be honest with you, 
I haven't uploaded and I haven't really worked on any videos. Um, I've had a lot going on, and I've been playing lazy. I haven't done most of the things I should. But other than that, I'm gonna get back to the subject at hand now. And to be honest, I'm probably gonna get cancer at some point because I'm constantly breathing in the lead fumes. I kind of like the smell for some reason. I'm not advising this. I'm saying do not do it. But I personally don't care what happens to me because I I'm Matthew. And if I breathe in lead fumes and get cancer, it's not the end of the world. And I'm not even joking right now. It, it will give you cancer. Whether it be long-term, long-term exposure, it doesn't matter. It will give you a cancer eventually. Um, there's multiple ways of actually getting this onto here. Here, let me turn up the temperature a little bit. I'll put this, uh, I'll put the temperature, and the temperature will be down below and before. It's the same temperature. Because, uh, this is after editing that you're seeing this, so, yeah. Um, now that all your solder is on, now, normally you'd want to get a better coat than this. But in my case, this is being particularly difficult. So, I'm, I'm just gonna go with this for video's sake. I'm gonna have to turn down the contrast a little bit. Okay, next thing you're gonna want to do, if you're done tinning your wires, actually let me let me come back to you when this wire is tinned. I'm gonna be back right back. Well, I'm back. So now that both wires are tinned, I'm going to show you what to do about your soldering iron. The first thing you're gonna want to do, see this is the tip cleaner. So what you're gonna want to do is just fist it a few times until the tip looks clean. Then you're gonna wanna rub the tip. You're gonna wanna rub the tip. Gotta get the satisfaction out. You're gonna wanna clean it on the sponge. Now, eventually your tips are going to degrade and you're gonna need to get new ones. It could last a while depending on how you use your tips, if you know what I mean. Or it could take a three, four days. It depends on what grade you get them or what like level you get them and how good they are, who you buy from, what they're made out of, really has a lot of factors. So this is where things start to get a little more complicated, actually attaching the two wires together. So I'm going to show you, now is when you're really going to want to get a clean place. Now before you solder on your wires, I'm going to saying this because this is late, and uh, kind of late now, but now that uh, before you solder on your wires, the first thing you're going to want to do is f use flux on your wires. It's basically just to clean the dirt off of the wires. It makes it a lot easier to put solder onto them. Now, the flux, I have flux, I just couldn't find it. So I decided not to use it for video's sake. So, dab. Yeah, I just did the dab. Um, so, next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to touch these two wires together, heat this up. Don't do that. That is honestly a safety hazard. Don't let the wire fly into your hand. And for some reason, this is not heating up. Screw it, I'm gonna go all the way up to four. Um, I don't recommend this, but if it works better, and it works more efficiently, I'll put the temperature up there. It's gonna be the same one as before, once again. Uh, why is this... Okay, it's heating up, so why is it... This is weird. I'll be back with you in just a second. So, I found a temperature that works. It was, it's uh, about six. I've had to boost, if you, if you get that, what that reference is from, go ahead and leave a like and comment. Um, so, once you get to the right temperature, which again, will be the same temperature that's up there uh, previously in the video, you're going to want to heat up your solder, and you'll be able to see it liquefy. So once it's liquefied, you'll know. I run it across a little bit first, and then I hold it so it fully liquefies. And then I take my second wire, I make sure it's still, no, the solder is still liquid, which in this case it isn't. So I'm going to re-solder it, or re-tin it, Ugh, I can't speak. I'm going to reheat it, if, yes, I'm a microwave now. Um, no, I'm going to have, why is this not working? I mean, I can feel the heat from, like, about an inch away from the solder, so I don't know why this isn't working. If anybody knows anything about electrical engineering or soldering or anything like this, let me know, because I'm still fairly new, and this is kind of weird that this is happening. 
I'm gonna get so cancer right now. Jesus Christ, why is this not working? So I've got the wire heated up now. Holy crap, I melted the, the pl uh, plastic. So the wire is now about heated. The best way to do this is probably with a heat gun. Okay, this is very strange to be honest. in here? No, she's trying to get into my room. Give me one second, I'm on the cat. Cat logic, my friends, I open my door and my cat instantly bolts away. Makes sense, um, oh, wow. That's probably not good. Um, yeah, I'm still fairly new to this kind of soldering. Well, there's one, only one kind of soldering from what I know. Anyways, back to the subject of wire soldering. Now that these two are, ah, finally, oh my god. This is becoming more difficult than it should. This normally won't happen with 14A, or, um, with smaller wire, but this is 14AWG. So it's going to be a lot more difficult to work with, because you need more heat. I'm probably going to upload a video on electric on electricity and, like, Ohm's Lawn crap. I'm trying to convert this to almost like a how-to electrical, I don't know, channel. Um, uh, so once you heat this up, and it's liquefied... This is proving to be a lot more difficult than it really should be. God dang it. Fuck that top. Yeah, I curse. I'm 14. Deal with it. Hi, Twilight. Uh, if you can see... No, you can't see from here. Well, my cat is right behind my bed. Right about, right about here, right behind my bed. She'll probably come around soon enough. Um, this is here. Or, I'm weird. I have autism. No cap. Legit, I'm high functioning. Um, why can I not get this fucking thing to heat up? Yeah, I'm gonna come back to you when I can get this connected. Basically, what you have to do is just hold it, or heat up the wire, or the the, uh, the solder, which is the silver part, and then just pu push it together. So I'll, I'll be back with you when that's done. Now, when you're soldering, you're gonna notice that there's there's two types of solder, of solder joints. One of them is a cold solder, and the other one, my cat is under the table. Well, this is interesting. There's two types of solders. The, there's a cold solder, which is basically when it is a very weak connection, and it falls apart easily. Like, if it's only a very small connection, hi Twilight, if there's only a, a very small connection, it's going to be a cold solder. Now, I don't know what the name for the other solder is, but it basically it's just when it's a strong connection. You'll know it's a strong connection because it won't flex very much. So, in this case, this is a cold solder, and you gotta be careful when you have cold solders. Because it can get kinda difficult, because if you heat up the solder that's already, per se, um, melted, or that's already solidified and connecting the two wires together, there's going- oh, that- what did I just say? It's going to disconnect, and it's going to become two wires again. So, I'm going to try to fix this. And I've always found this to be fairly difficult, because it doesn't really want to function most of the time. I would use thinner wire because it's easier. Only problem is I don't have any thinner wire. I mean, I bought this 14 AWG for a school project. I'm in 8th grade. 
and I'm still a nerd, and I'm doing crap with electricity. This is really going to give me cancer. Why is this so f***ing difficult? Fourteen, gang. Like and comment if you're fourteen. Subscribe if you're watching this in 2020. Or don't subscribe, I really don't care. I mean, it's good, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. Anyways, before I start incriminating myself... Oh, is that supposed to be popping like that? I don't know. Um... I'm gonna have a video coming up soon, probably, hopefully next week, about Ohm's Law and crap like that. The, melt is, the mat is literally melting and getting plastic all over the uh, wire. Did I finally get it? Maybe? Nope. I'm gonna have to filter that out. That was ear piercing. Um, sorry headphone users. That was honestly unnecessary. So this is being really uncooperative and I don't exactly know why. Also, keep in mind I'm filming this at like, what? Two, one in the morning practically. So, uh, I'm still, like, half asleep. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this on the other wire. This- I'm normally better than this, but in this particular case, it doesn't want to function. So, I'll get back to you when this is soldered. Well, I finally got a at least semi-good joint. Meanwhile, this is, like, really freaking hot. So, I'm gonna be careful with that. Now, you're definitely going to want to clean your tip. Because as it stands now, your tip is probably going to be stupidly dirty. And I'm not saying like dirt and crap, I'm saying full of solder. You're, there's going to be a little bit of solder wasted, it's not the end of the world. Um, so like you again, like you last time, you're just going to fish your, um, your brass, or your, no, what's it called? Um, your soldering tip cleaner. And then you're going to Rub it on the sponge. Rub it real good. Um, so now you're done with your soldering iron. And if, when all of your joints are connected, you're done with your solder. So, in this particular case, I'm not going to show you how to use the hot glue, because it's obvious. You just wrap it in hot glue until there's no exposed terminal. Um, the terminal is the part of the wire that is the metal part. The part that you just soldered. So, the second part, or the second way. This is electrical tape. It's literally just tape made of a rubber silicone material. It's usually like a rubber vinyl material. In this case, this particular one is vinyl. So you're just going to wrap it in it. And once again, until there's no exposed terminals. Now, heat shrink is a weird one. If you're going to use heat shrink, don't turn off your solder when you're done with all the connections. So in this case, I'm going to turn my solder back, or my soldering iron back on, and by solder, never mind. Um, you're going to need to find some heat shrink. Is this going to be large enough? That's what she said. Um, this, sh this should be long, uh, large enough. And once again, that's what she said. The joys of being a 14 and a 14 year old in eighth grade. Um, so you're going to put your solder, or your, why do I keep saying solder? You're going to put your heat shrink over the terminal. Obviously, you're going to need to turn down your temperature to as low as it'll go, assuming that your temperature isn't too low and it can still heat it up. Now, there's a few ways of doing this. You either can hold it under and it will heat and it'll shrink. Here, let me move that in frame. You can either hold this under and it'll shrink, or you can very lightly touch it and it'll shrink. Now, normally I touch it lightly because it's just easier. But you know, if you're going to touch it lightly, you have to move very fast over it. Like this. Now, there's a whole bunch more ways of doing this if you really want to do that. And if you want to learn more, check out Lewis Larsman's channel. He's a great... No, uh, he's great. He's good at repairing crap. Uh, all that shit. Um, 
So you're gonna want to make your your um your what's it called your heat shrink as tight as it'll get around the wire because we it has to be tight. If it's not tight, it's not worth it. Um, so in this case, it's about as tight as it'll get. This actually works for waterproofing. Most of these work for waterproofing, but if this is done correctly, it's a definite seal for waterproofing. So now you have this on, or you have your heat shrink on here, and you're good to go. Now, I'm gonna, you always have to make sure that you connect the right wires to the right wires. Like a positive terminal, or a positive wire, has to go to a positive wire, unless you're doing it in series with batteries. No. Yeah, I believe series. It's one of the two, a series or parallel. I'll figure it out and put it in uh, the other video. Um, second of all, this is a very good solution. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is probably your best bet. Using heat shrink. It's sh strong, it's flexible, and most of them are flexible. Hot glue can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. But make sure your heat shrink is also the right, like, heat. It has the right heat on, on capacity to make sure that if your wire over and gets really hot, it's not going to melt the heat shrink. That's very important. Um, there's a bunch of other things you have to worry about. No, you don't necessarily have to worry about them, but it's probably better to because if you're an engineer, or you're just a hobbyist getting started on something, you want to know these things is not to screw it up. And destroy something, set your, burn your house down, I don't know. So, that's pretty much all you need to know for soldering. So, that's that, and I'm gonna let you go, so. It's your boy, Shaywat is the one, signing off, see you in the next video. Bye!